The ongoing military confrontation that happened between the Indian Army and the People's Liberation Army of China has already emerged as the biggest military tussle in the Himalayas since the 1999 Kargil War. There were heavy casualties after the violent face-off this Monday. The tussle has serious international repercussions because Beijing is already being blamed for killing hundreds of thousands of people with the Wuhan virus and is behaving like a bully in Ladakh and South China Sea. Meanwhile, the Chinese propaganda machinery is in full flow, bolstered by the global liberal media that is relentlessly pushing a misleading narrative about the face-off, that is, China killed 20 Indian soldiers. In news headlines of the pro-China international media outlets, there is absolutely no mention of the PLA soldiers who have been whacked to death by the Indian Army troops. Therefore, the New York Times published a story titled Worst Clash in Decades on Disputed India-China Border Kills 20 Indian Troops. What NYT has also done is implicated nationalist leaders, a jibe at Prime Minister Modi, for risking open conflict. New York Times has compromised with the truth in order to portray India as the aggressor. These Western liberal media outlets love to hate India and Prime Minister Modi. Despite the strong ties between the governments and people of both the United Kingdom and the United States with India. And when it comes to anti-India bias, the BBC never lags behind. The British media outlet tweeted, At least 20 Indians died in clash with Chinese forces in Kashmir, India says, in first deadly skirmish for decades. BBC doesn't even want to acknowledge India's internal matter of bifurcating the union territories of Jammu and Kashmir and Ladakh. This is why it has wrongly mentioned Kashmir as the new venue of the face-off. Another UK media outlet Financial Times reported 20 Indian soldiers killed in clash with Chinese troops in Himalayas. Washington Post too tried to project the PLA as a formidable force and tried to undermine the Indian Army. It reported 20 Indian soldiers killed in first deadly clashes with Chinese troops in 45 years. Al Jazeera carried a similar report titled, India says 20 soldiers killed in border clash with China. Make no mistake, such tendentious reports with shoddy coverage form part of a deliberate pro-China propaganda. These liberal media outlets in the West are trying to project India as a weak player by falsely suggesting Beijing's military hegemony over New Delhi. This is a message that these media outlets are trying to give to their own conservative governments, not to boycott and punish China by overtly supporting its democratic neighbour. This also comes at a time when the pro-China lobby around the world is rattled by increasing cooperation between democratic countries to counter growing Chinese influence and hegemony. While the Western liberal media is busy pushing a misleading narrative, the events have been reported in a transparent manner in India, in the true spirit of democracy. On the other hand, what is being seen in China is a complete underplaying of the entire incident. It is important to remember that this incident is being described as the bloodiest of clashes between the two countries in 45 years. Yet, what is it that prevents the Chinese media from reporting on the same extensively with the same vigour with which their Indian counterparts are covering the story? While major newspapers thought it fit to give the development a miss in its entirety, CCP mouthpiece Global Times covered the same on page 16, clearly indicating the level of importance it gave to the grave and violent developments along the line of actual control. On their digital platforms too, media outlets like Xinhua News and Global Times are not giving much coverage to the escalations which are being witnessed and are restraining themselves to only reports quoting senior Chinese officials. Global Times, meanwhile, is posting vague military drill videos on Twitter in what they think can scare India. The China-India section available on the website of Global Times houses just one report of the violent clashes which took place, and the headline of the same reads, China urges India to restrain. The next story in the section is dated 11th June, clearly showing how Global Times is under-reporting the recent developments. The lack of enthusiasm among Chinese media outlets to cover the developments is indeed something which must be read into. 
It is a given fact that China is now claiming the entire Galwan River Valley as its sovereign territory, and as such, it resorted to animalistic behavior against the Indian soldiers. However, the response they received and the casualties inflicted upon them are perhaps responsible for them giving a hard-line coverage to the developments amiss. China is the undoubted aggressor and has received a whacking of its life, which it will remember forever. To hide their shame, perhaps, the state-controlled media of China has been asked by the CCP to refrain from extensive coverage of the violent clashes. After all, as reported by us earlier, the PLA is an army of whims and sissies. India, meanwhile, has given a free hand to local commanders along the line of actual control to respond to any Chinese aggression in a manner they deem fit, notwithstanding previous SOPs. Many now say that the rules of engagement with China have changed for the better, and any Chinese misadventure will be responded to in a manner not previously known to or experienced by the communist state.